Hey folks, so in this video, I'm going to show you where to find CPU compatibility, where the BIOS files are, and memory compatibility, all that good stuff with the Gigabyte B760M DS3H, all right? So, you know, some people have complained about the amount of information provided and you know something like the unboxing video it's really difficult to give you guys every little detail possible in one of those um that would make the video about an hour long and then you start getting complaints about how long the video is all right so first thing you want to do folks is uh type in the name of the motherboard if you have the ac version you would add that to it all right um, AC is the Wi-Fi version. So we're going to click here. That brings this up, all right? Uh, quite a bit of information here about the motherboard. But uh, what we want is to go to support. And then in here, folks, let's just look at download. So... You know, people a lot of times ask me, hey, what, what should I download to get started? Um, sadly, I use <laughs> a lot of the same drives, so I don't have to, uh, maybe not sadly, but uh, I don't have to download a lot of this stuff because it works automatically. But um, sometimes I do go back and download things that don't work. Um, you know, if this was an Asus motherboard, you might want to download the Intel Management Engine firmware. But um, for me, LAN a lot of times is something I need to download, um, especially when the Ethernet is not uh, recognized. So um, definitely, you know, get this one in there. If you had issues with SATA, um, you may want to go in here and download these. If you are not going to have a graphics card, you'll want to go in and download this Intel graphics driver. All right. Now, BIOS, I'll show you how to do um, hopefully both BIOS updates. Um, right now, I've done one BIOS update, which is, which is basically downloading this file and going to the BIOS itself and doing the update. There's also a way to do the BIOS update without the GPU CPU or RAM installed just using a power supply thumb drive in your motherboard um, I've got other videos that demonstrate that unfortunately there's only one revision right now so I don't have another revision to make the other video with but uh, yeah this is where you find the BIOS file always remember you know read what's over here on the right side and whatever the newest one is it's cumulative, so that's the one you want to download. All right, watch my video on that. So then you have some of the additional software, uh, that Gigabyte Control Center, which may automatically launch because there's a setting in the BIOS to shut that off. Uh, of course, you can click the message to get rid of it, but. This isn't such a bad thing if you want to just have the whole thing pretty much auto-update all your drivers. Um, get that. This other stuff, you know, not so important. So this motherboard doesn't have RGB. Otherwise, you would see software in here to run RGB. All right. Now, other drivers. Uh, audio. Looks like I missed some stuff, folks. You might want to grab this uh, audio. Well, actually, you definitely want to grab this if you want to have your uh, audio working, especially off of a you know fresh installation of Windows. Now, CPU compatibility. You'll see, folks, that every 12th and 13th gen is compatible with this motherboard. But does that mean that you should use all these CPUs on this thing? I'm gonna say no. Um, why is that? Well, things, this motherboard's a little weak for, uh, VRM, for heat sinks, and, you know, it's not, it's just not ideal for one of these high-end CPUs, like these top three that are shown here, okay? 
Uh, could you use, you know, something like this i9 13900F in it? Uh, that's a little more realistic. I Personally, I think this motherboard's more of a, you know, locked i7, locked i5 and below, all right? Um, another reason for not running one of these K-type chips, you can't overclock with this thing. You're not going to end up with the same performance that you might get out of a higher-end B760, and definitely not uh, does not have the potential that a Z690 or Z790 has. All right, so like I said, these are all the CPUs. Over here, folks, is the BIOS file that this is supposedly um, compatible with, right? So since this is 700 series, every CPU is good off of F1, all right? So that's kind of a nice detail. If you buy this off the shelf, you're good to go to at least run these CPUs. Now, does that mean later on, you know, you will need, you won't need a BIOS update to fix some other problem you have? Uh, no, it does not. But it at least means you'll be able to get up and running. The other really important thing in here, folks, memory support list. All right, I cannot tell you how big a deal this is until you don't get your RAM to run at the right speed. So I've had nothing but problems with Kingston Fury RAM. I have 5200 megahertz RAM. And I don't know if it is actually, let's see if we can get just Kingston. Yeah, so the RAM that I have does not appear to be fully compatible. It's not listed, which makes sense because it'll only run at 4800. Uh, some of the other motherboard manufacturers will tell you what the speeds are that these things run at if you um, if it doesn't run at the max speed using XMP. But uh, in this case, you know, it's it's does not show you. Um, now, does that mean that your RAM will not run if it's not on this list? No. It just means that uh, pretty much that top speed is not fully compatible. So like I said, I have Kingston Fury 5200 megahertz, and it runs uh, only at, at 4800. So definitely go in here, folks. Verify your RAM works that you want to buy. And if not, pick some other RAM. Otherwise, it's just going to be a bit of a headache, right? Um I didn't, you know, I didn't even realize there was slower speed DDR5. I thought it all started at 4,800. <laughs> uh, oh, well. So that's about it, folks, for this. Um, I hope you got something out of it. Please like, please subscribe. Thank you.